Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, and Friends. Today we're going to talk about excessive egg laying, what it is, and how to deal with it. This is not one of those quick, cute, funny parrot videos that goes viral. This is the best information that I can put forward to try to help others with this life-threatening condition. I know that in the US most YouTube viewers prefer six-minute videos with cuddly parrots or funny parrots. I can't change that. What I can do is point out that prevention may keep you from shelling out $2,000 for a special kind of hysterectomy. Not only is the surgery expensive, but if not done properly, or if there are complications, your parrot may die on the surgery table or in the weeks that follow. We would appreciate it if you could help us, and uh, we value all of our patrons. Thank you so much for for donating and, and helping us to care for these birds and to produce these videos to to help educate the public. And uh, of course, we learn more as we go along too. So here we go. This is Dr. Jenkins of the Avian and Exotic Animal Hospital in San Diego. So you want to know about me? Yeah, in my background, um, went to the University of Utah. Um, got a, my undergraduate degree in um, biology with a strong emphasis in comparative physiology. That's my passion. I love comparative physiology. Um, went to vet school at Colorado State University, um, and then I was blessed to get to do a kind of a training position with the two big gurus of exotic animal medicine on the West Coast, um, uh, Walt Roscoff and Rick Werpel. Uh, Rick, bless his soul, is dead and gone, died of colon cancer, but uh, Walt still seeing patients in Hawthorne, California. But these guys are responsible for the vast majority of the drug doses we still use today in these animals, and I would say 90% of the blood values for that we use when we test them, uh, as far as you know, CBC and chemistries. It was kind of funny because I think um, the academic community really gave them a hard time and criticized them over um, the stuff that they published on those normals. Um, but I think they've been vindicated because today, 30 years later, uh, we still use all their same values. So they were right. They just uh, same for both the like antibiotic doses and a number of other drug doses, which they had to do kind of more through trial and error because they weren't doing you know, blood levels and things like that. They were just um, doing what they could, flying by the seat of their pants and finding out what worked and keeping track of it, you know, so. But be because I spent three years with Walt and Rick, I think I'm here where I am today, and I never would have been here had I not had that opportunity. So they're a uh, big part of my uh, my success of being a bird and exotic animal. Uh, moved to San Diego in 1985, opened this hospital in March of 1987, uh, moved in November of 85, so it um, took me a little while to get the thing up and running, and it's been going for 28 years as of the first of this month. Um, got to see a lot of things, but um, it's the animals that teach me stuff more than anything. And, uh, and we've been um, wise enough, I'd like to say, to go look. So every animal that dies unexpectedly, um, I'm twisting somebody's arm to let me do the post-mortem on it to find out what it had, why it died, what was going on. And I don't resent doing any of those necropsies over 30 years. I've done lots and lots and lots of necropsies. Um, I was lucky enough to get included in the political aspect of bird medicine and reptile medicine and small mammal medicine, um, and get to be part of um, that community and help direct um, the direction that some of that medicine went for years and years. I've been kind of out of the political end since the late 90s. Um, now my kids are grown up, I may get back in, so they'd better watch out. Um, because um, 
I don't know. The other thing about uh, being in this business is you get to develop an opinion. And I certainly have mine. <laughs> so uh, the caveat with everything is that, you know, this is my opinion. Some of, it, some of it's proven, some of it's challenging, if not impossible to prove, at least where we are today. So thankfully, um, I'm still here. Hopefully, I'll be here for a lot of years to go. I like going to work every day. Part of it's like in people, you know, because um, if you, I, I meet people all the time who go, I want to be a veterinarian because I don't really like people that well. But my business is really a people business because everything we do is negotiation. You know, we have to work out, because it's not like human medicine where we just get to do everything we want with your patient. Somebody has to pay for it, I'm afraid, and so everything we do, pretty much, we sit down and try to figure out how to make it work. How do we do enough to save your animal um, at a price that you can afford? Lorelei, for example, picked up an infection here at the sanctuary after the procedure and was sneezing almost constantly. She had a respiratory infection. 14 days and two protocols of injecting antibiotics into her chest and now she seems completely out of the woods. Time will tell. For those of you who cannot or will not watch the entire video, please pay attention for just a moment or two. I will line up the basics for you. If your parrot is laying eggs and the shell of the egg becomes weak, you will probably need to get your bird a hysterectomy. If the shell breaks inside your bird and the unformed egg inside rots, your bird will most likely die. Even surgery in such situations is doubtful. Once the egg rots, infection usually kills. Even when the bird is surgically cleaned of the rotten egg, often they succumb or face physical challenges the rest of their lives. So learn what you can to try and keep your bird from overproducing eggs. Do not stimulate them by petting them improperly or for more than five minutes at a time. Check any eggs to see if the shell is weak. In other words, it's easily flexed. Have regular checkups with your avian vet and discuss egg laying with them. Be sure that you can get a qualified avian surgeon if the need arises. And refer to this complete video if you do have trouble. Follow the pre-surgical protocol given to you by the surgeon and the post-surgery protocol as well. Our videos cannot replace the counsel of an avian veterinarian, and we do not claim to do so. Always follow the advice of your avian vet and get a second opinion if you have any doubts. Okay, Lorelei's surgery. Now, why did she have a surgery? She was doing excessive egg laying at an unbelievable rate. About one egg a month for over a year. I tried all the mitigations that you possibly could think of using applied behavior analysis, environmental stimulus changes, etc., 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 and it was all to no avail. Finally, she laid an egg that was thin. It broke when it fell to the bottom of the cage, and when I took the egg and I squeezed it, the actual shell was flexing. This shows that there's calcium depletion. When there's a weakness in wall strength like that, you can assume that there's a calcium problem. Two things basically mandated the surgery. The frequency of the egg laying, because in the wild, the normal clutch is two, and if for some reason those eggs don't become viable, they may lay another two, but beyond that, you're talking abnormality, okay? So four eggs is excessive, Four eggs in five months is a red flag. And anything more than that, boy, you better be checking into it, okay? So you want to begin mitigation at one egg. So the first thing I did with Lorelei is make sure she had nothing in her cage she could mate with, which she promptly decided to lean up against the bars and vibrate against them. That's what a female will do. They will, they will vibrate in order to attract a mate she finally just started vibrating on her perch, sitting there with nothing around her, having removed all the toys and anything that she could actually use to try to nest in. She just sat there and vibrated. 
Okay. Excessive mating behavior is usually shown in a female that's vibrating. A male butt will do it with tail rubbing, but females vibrate and they crouch down a little bit and they make a clucking sound. Coupled with egg laying, uh, this is severe. Okay. Now, at the point where you have a bird that's acting like that, you've got mating behavior that's out of control. Um, sometimes that can also be territoriality, where the bird becomes uh, defensive of their cage, cage territoriality, or defensive of another bird, a male in their uh, flock. And, of course, you do not want your birds to be in the same cage. You should never have two birds in one cage when you're talking about parrots, okay? So... Once you've made these changes and you're sure you're not petting them improperly and not petting them too long, if you're petting them and they start vibrating, then something's wrong, okay? Uh, if you're only petting them for five minutes and they're still vibrating, you've got danger signs there. So at that point, you may pet them for two minutes or whatever it is. Reduce the amount of petting to the point where you don't have vibrations. You don't want bad vibes, right? Okay. Lupron injections or Deslorelin injections um, can slow or stop this behavior. It did with Kazi. Uh, Kazi had one Deslorelin implant, okay, as opposed to an injection. This was an implant. It's something that they put into their chest muscle and then it slowly releases Deslorelin or the Lupron into their system to keep them from showing any mating behavior. It shuts down the actual hormone production, okay? Implants don't last as long, but when you're talking about Lupron injections, you're talking like $400 an injection. It's about the same for a Deslorelin implant. The Deslorelin implant worked with cause. We haven't had a problem once in a while, she'll vibrate, but that constant vibrating is gone, and we're talking three years. We got lucky there. With Lorelei, the Deslorelin implant did nothing. Well, the first week she showed some less interest in uh, mating, but uh, after that she was right back at it. Okay. A Deslorelin implant or a Lupron implant should last up to six months, uh, sometimes longer, but you can get lucky like we did with Cause too. Environmental considerations. No nesting areas, no toys to mate with, uh, now, keep in mind, if they don't have toys, it can cause other issues. Boredom, stereotypic behavior, you know, where a bird will go walk back and forth the same way, or turn their head in exactly the same pattern over and over again, or they be can become aggressive. You can enrich their lives by giving them their food in different places in there, wrapping their food in things, you know, making it so they'll forage. Foraging is a good form of enrichment. Um, if you can give them a toy that they don't rub up against, that's fine. Uh, it's better if you can do that, but with Lorelei there really wasn't a choice. You gave her a toy and she would try to mate with it, so. Also playing music or putting on a television close to them so that they can actually watch, like <laughs> Romeo with his 48 inch TV. Give them something so that they're not bored and they have something to keep their attention besides potential mate in their environment. That mate could be you. Maybe there's no other bird in the house, but that mate could be you, okay? If they continue to lay eggs, and again the legs, the, the eggs become thin, then you're talking surgery, okay? You want to choose the best of the best for the avian vet doing the surgery. We chose Dr. Jeffrey Jenkins in San Diego at the Avian and Exotic Animal Hospital. He's been a surgeon for 33 years. He's had that business there uh, that long, and uh, he knows what he's doing. He has a great proven track record. That's what you're looking for. He's available for aftercare, okay? He gives you a way to contact him if something goes wrong. I'm including a short video with Dr. Jenkins in this video, okay? Uh, the point of that is so you can interview your vet and check out their record. So you can see his record and see why we chose him. Now, what are the dangers of excessive egg laying? Calcium depletion, egg binding, that's where the egg gets stuck inside, so you may have a fully formed egg. It may have a weak shell, but it's still inside the bird. The bird can't get it out. Massive infection due to an egg that does not form a shell. 
That kind of infection is kind of like having a ruptured appendix, and if you've known anyone like that, we actually have someone on the board who had that problem, it's life-threatening. Um, with birds, few get through that, because most people don't recognize the problem when it happens. It's not often that people check the cloaca area to see if there's an egg in there. And it's hard to tell if you just have the mushy egg inside and there's no shell, okay? The dangers of mating behavior are not just egg production, but their territoriality, okay? If a bird becomes mated to you or to another bird in the house, at that point they, they become territorial and protect the other bird, and that can mean that they would bite you. Most people don't realize that. If they're mated to you, they may bite you to warn you that you don't want that person coming over to you, right? Okay. Uh, other dangers are excessive egg laying, which is what we're talking about here. Um, mate aggression. If you have birds that consider themselves mated, there can be mate aggression in cockatoos. And in most birds, that would be the male attacking the female. That happened here with Chloe. Uh, fortunately, I caught it before it got out of hand, but snowball still isn't good around other female birds. So it can cause injury, it can cause death, and it can cause psychological damage. Considerations for making the judgment call, okay? You know, whether a surgery is really required. Do you have a thin shell? Is there constant egg production? Do you have unstoppable mating behavior, such as Lorelei sitting on a perch? just vibrating there with no outside influence at all. Uh, drugs are failing to intercede in the presentation of mating behavior or egg production. So you've been, your bird has had a Lupron shot and three days later, they're still acting the same way. Uh, not a good thing. None of these are to be taken lightly and it can easily be the road to se severe uh, health issues or death if you fail to weigh these issues and talk to your avian vet about them. I suggest that at the point where you decide you're going to or may have a hysterectomy, uh, that you have at least uh, $5,000 in credit available for issues or complications. Um, Lorelei's surgery was quoted as, and, and the quote stuck, anywhere from a little over $1,000 to almost $2,000. and with all the complications that came from being infected at home, because they, when, when you have a surgery, you weaken the, the uh, constitution of your bird for a while, okay? So it's easier for them to get infected. So that was another grand on top of what uh, the surgery cost us. So have the money available, be willing to spend it. If you're not willing to spend the money, then you can't do the surgery, can you? But you may lose your bird. Now, surgeons do this kind of surgery if, uh, if you've got egg laying, you know, disorders like this, or the eggs are always coming out wrong. Even if your bird were only producing two eggs in a year, but they were getting bound in there, then you would still need to consider this surgery. There's lots of other kinds. There's damage or trauma to the oviduct. The worst, of course, is internal laying, where a bird lays an egg inside, there's no shell formed. And then you have that kind of rotting that goes on. So what they're going to do is they're going to go in there and remove a bunch of stuff, okay, and seal things off. It's uh, a complicated procedure. I'm not going to describe it all because we'd have a heck of a long uh, video if I did that. But uh, they have this procedure is done on birds as small and as large as ducks. And the risk isn't as bad as it used to be, but there's still a risk, okay? Anytime you're putting a bird under uh, anesthesia for 45 minutes or an hour, you're putting their lives in the balance. The cost and potential side effects. Uh, there's the death during surgery. Anesthesia is dangerous um, when it's prolonged, especially in parrots. Reduced immune responses to disease, as what happened with Lorelei after, uh, reco or during recovery. The potential for bleeding both internal and external. The organs that make hormones remain in place. They can't remove the ovaries because they wrap around uh, critical arteries, okay? The egg cycle, that's going to change. There's going to be uh, no more egg production and that can help reduce mating behavior, but this varies from individual to individual. 
The diaphragm in some air sacs must be cut through in order to do the surgery. So, um, especially like with umbrella cockatoos, that diaphragm is very thin. So they have to sew it down, sew it back up like you're darning a sock. And then uh, Dr. Jenkins actually took the muscle of the thigh and moved it up over that area to, to further strengthen it because the last thing you want your bird doing is coming home and uh, vocalizing. You're going to try to keep your bird quiet for several days. Yeah, try that. It worked with Lorelei, but you no know, guarantees there. They put a lot of pressure on that diaphragm, and if they pop those stitches open, you're probably going to lose your bird. So this is an issue you have to think about. You can have potential, potential issues include things like um, problems with breathing or internal bleeding. Um, the cost is anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 or more, depending on the bird and the surgeon. It's much more if you've got egg binding or you have other issues inside, such as a, an egg that is trapped inside. Okay. Count on more for rechecks and antibiotic protocols. Like I say, it cost us another $1,000 uh, with Lorelei. So expect problems and anticipate them. Uh, Pre-surgery considerations. Lupron injections are not optional. You should have your bird get a Lupron injection unless your vet advises against it. But the reason for it is to reduce the potential of problems in surgery and to stop egg production. You want to get those veins inside as small as possible and you want everything there looking as normal as possible when that surgery is done. And you want to keep your bird calm and uh, so taking them to the vet you want them to be calm play music in the vehicle when you're on the way um, make sure that they're calm being inside of a uh, travel cage that kind of thing now after the surgery you're probably going to have your bird there at the uh, veterinary hospital overnight that's normal maybe maybe two nights you know it all depends on how the surgery goes when they come home you put them in a small cage with no perch Again, your avian vet will recommend, I'm just telling you what we did, okay, and what's for, what uh, our vet required. Uh, keep them quiet. You do not want them using that diaphragm. So remove any distractions. Uh, with Lorelei, we put her in the back room away from Cecil because that's the bird she wants to be her mate, and I believe they are mated the way they act. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not they physically mated. They're mated in their minds, and they do that for life, okay? <laughs> Make sure they have... Uh, Fresh water, check their droppings to make sure you're not seeing any blood and that the droppings look normal. Now, if they're on an antibiotic protocol, then you're going to see abnormal looking poop. That's just the way it works. You want to at least twice a day check the incision site where it's all sewn up to make sure that we don't have any uh, bleeding. Usually they use dissolving uh, sutures, so it's not like you have to go back to have them removed, but... Um, if you see any unusual redness or any other problems, uh, you'll probably get a sheet from your veterinarian telling you what to look for. Uh, don't waste time letting your vet know, okay? So report any unusual behavior or physical change. Now with Lorelei, what I noticed was that constant sneezing when she got home. She wasn't doing it at the vet. This was about two days later, which is a good indication that she picked up something here. Um, so I went down and they did a culture of her throat and she was put on pepricillin immediately because she was sneezing so much. That didn't knock it out. So we had to go back down and get a second protocol of it for another seven days. And I had the pleasure of sticking a needle in her chest, you know, 28 times. Uh, something you probably will look forward to. I'm just kidding. Uh, Normally, they don't have too much of a reaction to that. As long as your bird can be held, that little thin needle does not uh, does not generally hurt much going in, so they don't generally give you any trouble, and Lorelei didn't. She saw it going in, and she was looking at it like, what? You could see the look on her face. She was shocked, but she didn't jump around or anything. But it's best to restrain them. If your birds are well-trained to sit still when you're working with them, such as ours are because I've taken glasses and learned how to do it, not because I have any special magical powers, um, then it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, figure if you have some kind of an infection, anywhere from $700 to $1,000 um, is what you're going to end up paying for it. 
Make sure their weight remains within norms, and you should be checking their weight every day. If you're not doing that at least once a week, once they get back from the, the surgery, though, check them every day, okay? You don't have to put them on a perch uh, by a special uh, scale, like a kitchen scale will work fine. Uh, you should train your birds to use one of those. Anyway. Now, Lorelei's fine. Uh, she's no longer sneezing. It's been over two weeks since she had the surgery. Her feathers are coming back in and her attitude with it. Uh, the little thing is, uh, of course, trying to get as close to Cecil as she can. Today I actually had put, I had one of these Japanese screens that you use to like divide one area from another. And I use it when there's a problem between birds. I kind of got that idea from my anthropology class. When I learned about what the uh, the uh, bambuti, the pygmies in the Aturi forest do, if two of the two two uh, families have a problem, what they what they will do is they will pick up their because their little houses are made out of grass. They will pick them up and turn them away, so that their door is not facing that person anymore. Um, they don't have much violence, or actually don't have any real violence at all in the bambuti, but that's what they will do. So. Uh, I put that screen up so that they can't see each other uh, because they are in close cages that are close to each other. Prior to the surgery, she was in the back room away from everybody else. Science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots in public awareness. Thank <laughs> you.